This week, we may have witnessed the biggest chess drama in recent memory. Last Sunday, Magnus Carlsen, a candidate for the greatest chess player of all time, finally lost the game to a 19-year-old American who has risen to the top of chess at a phenomenal speed. It sounds like a fairy tale, but he's been accused of cheating. Things got ugly, things got really crazy, and things aren't over yet. All right, before we get into this, I've got exciting news for you guys. Three words, we have merch. If you go to the description box below, you'll find a link to our merch page where we have a whole load of new merch items for you to check out. My favorite is a hoodie that simply says touch grass. I love it, it's sick. Go and check it out, see what you guys like. Christmas is around the corner. Not really, but you know what I mean, <laughs> check it out. Now, if you're not really in the world of chess, you might not really associate it with drama, but this is some of the biggest drama the community has seen in years. Let me set the scene. The Singfield Cup is a big chess tournament held annually in St. Louis in the US. It's part of the Grand Chess Tour, a circuit of tournaments that seeks to pit the best players in the world against each other. The first Singfield Cup was held back in 2013 and was won by a chess player that even non-chess fans might have heard about, Magnus Carlsen. A lot of people regard 31-year-old Carlsen as a serious contender for the best chess player of all time. The Norwegian Grandmaster is a five-time world chess champion who, until recently, was on a 53-game winning streak. But that streak ended last Sunday when he lost to 19-year-old American Hans Niemann. And this is where the drama begins. Now, Niemann is not an established name in the chess world by any means. His rise to the top has been meteoric, to say the least, over the past few years. He'd done well to make it through the first and second rounds of the tournament, but for the third round, he was to face off against Carlsen, and that's usually a chess death sentence. Nobody seriously expected him to put a dent in Carlsen's march through the tournament. He'd done well to get there, but this was likely the end of the road. But to everyone's surprise, the game didn't go as expected. Far from it, in fact. Carlsen seemed to make some uncharacteristically strange moves before a blunder saw his chances of a win and even a draw disappear into a loss. There we have it. Wow. What a result. What wow. a result, guys. Truly. Wow. I can just imagine the chat going uh, nuts at this point. Now, this was all obviously a huge shock. How did Carlson blunder like that? How was Neiman so clinical? The next day, things got even crazier. Magnus tweeted out that he had withdrawn from the tournament, something he had never done before. And he added the famous clip of football manager Jose Mourinho being interviewed. I prefer really not to, um, not to speak. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. Now, if you've never seen that clip before, it's something people usually share when there's something they really want to say, but for whatever reason, they can't. People assumed that this was an implication that Neiman had cheated, an accusation which quickly spread. One person who discussed this on stream was Hikaru Nakamura, an American chess grandmaster, Twitch streamer, and longtime rival of Carlsen. I think that Magus believes Magus believes that Hans probably is cheating. Again, unproven. Who, who knows what the reality is? He probably does believe that in his heart of hearts that Hans cheated in that game or that he is cheating or whatever, okay? So if Magnus believes that, what is Magnus gonna do in the situation? If he really believes that, okay, if you go out and you say something, but you have no proof, then you're, then like, then, I mean, the burden of proof is extremely high, of course, because like, if it's not done at the time when you're at the game, of course, you can't prove anything. Um, and so you really have no way of proving that if you really believe that. So, so I think Magnus's way of basically saying that is like, he's not gonna actually say it, but he's putting out this clip saying, if I talk, I'm in trouble, and he's withdrawing to make the point without publicly making the point. And the susness people were feeling around Neiman in general hadn't come out of thin air. He had been accused of cheating in online games in the past and had famously been banned from chess.com in the middle of a stream two years ago. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I got banned. Oh, <laughs> I got banned. <laughs> Too. Yeah, he banned, she banned me, just banned me. He banned me, oh my God. This is probably something I should not say, but I will say this anyway, which is there was a period of over six months where Hans did not play any prize money terms on chess.com. That is the one thing that I'm going to say. And that is the only thing that I'm gonna say on this topic. 
But it's not just previous bans that made people suspicious of Neiman's win over Carlsen. There was a lot of technical chess involved too. For example, one of the points that came up was how Neiman claimed he was able to counter Carlsen's G3 Nimzo opening by remembering a time when he played it at a different tournament. Now, some said Carlsen had never done this, but others showed Neiman might just have got the tournament name wrong and had in fact seen this before. Now, frankly, a lot of these chess details do go over my head, but there's a lot of chess channels out there that break down all the details if you really want to get stuck in. For everyone else though, all you need to know is that the chess community was exploding by this point, but there were still some, like Grandmaster Levon Aronian, who called for giving Neiman the benefit of the doubt. Well, I think uh, it quite often happens when young players play very well, there is all these accusations towards them. I've I mean, all of my colleagues are pretty much paranoid, and quite often I was the one telling them, come on, guys. But Neiman wasn't out of the firing line yet. The next day, he lost a match in the fourth round and gave a post-game interview about what he thought went wrong. At the end, he was asked about Carlsen quitting the tournament. The interviewer and Hikaru both found some amusement in his answer. Yeah, I guess that was the only reason, yes? You can't think of anything else. <laughs> yeah. That was the only reason. Uh, <laughs> Look at Alejandro laughing, like, that's the only reason. <laughs> but one question a lot of people are asking by this point is even if there were these suspicions of Neiman cheating, how exactly did he cheat? Some of the theories out there were pretty absurd. That's probably a good one, right? An anal bead probably would beat the thing. I, I'm serious. If the engine, I, it would probably... <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. Like, think about it. I, I don't know. Either way, the tournament organizers decided to step up their physical security and add a 15 minute stream delay. This seemed to indicate they suspected something shady might be going on, but weren't sure exactly what form it might take. Tony Rich, the tournament's executive director, said these additional security measures, as seen being demonstrated here on Neiman himself, were a way to ensure the integrity of the game, although he made no link to Carlsen and Neiman's match. But during all this theorizing and accusations, one person we hadn't heard from was Neiman himself. On Tuesday, he called out Hikaru directly on Twitter, saying that Hikaru has thoroughly enjoyed watching his interviews and criticizing every single detail to make, quote, frivolous implications. He added that he'd like Hikaru to watch his latest interview and see what he has to say. The interview in question was conducted earlier that day on the tournament stream after Neiman's round five match. He broke down Hikaru's accusations one by one, starting with how he was prepared for Magnus's opening. Okay, first of all, the Magnus opening. Okay, now uh, let's get to, get to that. So people were saying that uh, there was no idea why I checked this. Well, first of all, you know, people are absolute idiots because the explanation I'm going to give is going to make you all look, all the top GMs look like total idiots. So the position, first of all, they said there was zero game. There was a game. Check the database. There's this thing in chess called transpositions, okay? Now, when he played the move a3, of course I'm expecting to move knight f3. Now, let's say in the Catalan, no, let's, let's show it because this is just, this is just embarrassing. Um, this is absolutely embarrassing. Now, like I said earlier, we're not gonna get into the weeds here with all the chess details. The point is, Neiman wasn't gonna waste this opportunity to stand up for himself. One of the things he was keen to set straight was what happened with his chess.com bans that we spoke about earlier. So, in some, I wanted to gain some rating, you know, I just wanted to get higher rated so I could play stronger players. So I cheated in random games on chess.com. Now, I was confronted, I confessed, and this is the single biggest mistake of my life, and I'm completely ashamed, and I'm telling the world because I do not want any misrepresentation, and I do not want rumors. I have never cheated in an over-the-board game. Other, when I was 12 years old, I have never, ever, ever, and I would never do that, that is the worst thing I could ever do, cheat in a tournament with prize money. Now, I made that mistake, and this is something, it's not something I was doing consistently. Never when I was streaming did I cheat, never did I misrepresent my strength. So I made this mistake, I was confronted by chess.com, I had fully admitted, and I stopped playing chess.com. Neiman also shared the news that since the accusations of him cheating began to spread, chess.com had actually uninvited him from the global championship. Now that chess.com has suddenly decided to hop on Magnus's uh, insinuations, Hikaru's very direct accusations, now they see the opportunity, okay, we're just gonna get rid of this, I believe that this is completely unfair. This is a targeted attack, and if you look at my games, this is not, it's, it has nothing to do with my games. So why do you specifically, why do you, why does the CEO uh, just come to me and say we're looking forward to having the Global Chess Championship, we're looking forward 
to you playing on our events. And then right when I beat Magnus, they decide to remove my account and not let me play in the tournaments. This is absolutely ridiculous. And they've only done this because of what Magnus has said, what Picaro says, and that the entire social media and chess world is completely attacking me and undermining me. He was deeply unhappy at Carlson for the insinuating tweet, at chess.com for removing him from their tournament, and at Hikaru for his comments on the matter, which he actually addressed in his Thursday stream. Later on in the video, Hans very clearly, he uses this word, and I'll, I'll just say, he says, directly, d direct accusations. So he says that I directly accused him of cheating. Now, there might be a YouTube video coming out later um, from the VOD the other day specifically, because there are many instances where I said that he did not cheat over the board. The one thing I did say was that he did cheat online and he himself admitted that he did. So I wanna be very clear on that. That's the second point. When he says direct accusations, I never made a direct accusation about over the board shots. Hikaru brought up the general suspicion around Neiman due to just how quickly he's risen to the top over the past three years. Um, if you if you look at the history of Hans um, over the last couple of years, he's had probably the most meteoric rise in the entire history of chess um, of any 17 year old by far. Uh, if you look at the other other juniors who I believe are around like 2700 ish, I think almost all of them became grandmasters about 14, 15, maybe maybe some even at 16. But to go from a 2480 IM to 27, 10, 27, 20, whatever it might be in the last two years, uh, I think a lot of grandmasters are definitely suspicious of that. It's unprecedented in the entire history of chess. Now, we're not going to continue with this back and forth anymore. These videos are out there if you want to hear everyone's expanded points. But where do we lie now? Well, I suspect that some people who were on the fence or even suspected Neiman of cheating might be leaning the other way now. Now, that's partly because of the points he put forward in his interview, but also perhaps it's the fact that some aspects of this story feel like they have a bit of a witch hunt feel to them. Bear in mind that no concrete evidence has come to light yet, and these kinds of allegations can destroy a 19-year-old career before it even takes off. And perhaps in one final twist, Chess.com released a statement yesterday saying they have shared detailed evidence with Neiman about their decision to remove him from their events, evidence that contradicts his own statements. They say they have invited him to provide an explanation so that he'll be able to participate again. So is Neiman going to provide an explanation to Chess.com? Will it be public? And if he gets unbanned or stays banned from this, will this affect how the Carlson match will be perceived? To me, this this feels like we're on episode 5 out of a 7 episode TV series that has had the chess community absolutely glued to their seat. Will other pros get called out now too? This feels far from over. Remember, we haven't actually heard anything from Carlson yet other than that cryptic tweet. He made a strong implication that has the potential to damage someone's career. Some people feel that he needs to back that up now. And so we wait. And while we wait, you can guarantee that everyone involved in this saga will be contemplating their next move. I used to play chess at school as a kid. And I remember learning like the three move checkmate or four move checkmate or something. Uh, and then as soon as everyone figured out how to counter that, um, that was it. That was the end of my chess playing career. I was washed up. I retired. I left the scene.